Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. My name is Rebecca Ravenbird and today I am going to be teaching you how to properly apply for clubs. So these are going to be my tips and tricks on how to properly and professionally apply to any club that you want to join. So there's going to be two parts to this video. The first part is on researching your club and then the second part is about how to actually fill out an application and the best way to fill out any questions on your application. So my first general tip in the first place is to actually do research on your club. So you don't want to just apply for a club randomly. You want to make sure that you've done some digging and some information searching about the club that you're looking for. The first place we're going to start is Instagram. So if you have an Instagram, you can search up your club, whatever club that you're looking for. So at least for Emerald Hunters, it's going to be emeraldhunters.sso. And then you want to start looking for information as much as you can. So start looking in the bio. So you want to see what kind of club it is. Okay, so it's a dressage club. And if they have a specific theme. Then you want to look for what server they're on. We are on Cookie Canyon. Perhaps if they have an owner listed in their bio, you can take a look at the owner. And then usually clubs will like to put their application status in their bio. Right now our applications are closed, but I am going to be showing you our application in a moment so you can kind of see what it looks like. So definitely make sure to look for the application status. You want to look for the link tree. So we're going to open this up right now. So usually with the link tree, it's a whole bunch of links to different media sources. So this is going to be our application right here, our website, we have a YouTube channel and our Instagram. And so you want to make sure you look through all of these, but we're going to go back to Instagram here and then we're going to take a look at the highlights here. Okay, so for example, if we wanted to join, we're going to have all of this information here. So you want to carefully click and hold and read all of this information here for each of these different highlights. Okay, so our club, we specify the different tack and the horses. And then we also have a couple of these kinds of slides where we show off our dressage a little bit, but you'll definitely want to read the requirements right here. Press and hold and be sure to read all of those. And then you can start kind of scrolling through each of their different posts and see like who's commenting on them and then what kind of news or information is posted there on those posts. So our most recent post here, we talked about one of our events that we did an Earth Day event looking for recyclables. And then one of our plans is actually to compete in the Saturn Mains Out of This World dressage competition. So you can use your Instagram and take a look at any sort of news and information that that club is putting out on their page. So again, Instagram is one great source to see kind of what that club is about and who's in the club and what their theme is and all of that. It's a great visual resource as well. So you want to take a look at their Instagram if you have it. But now we're going to go ahead and take a look at our link tree here. So we have our next link right here, which is going to be our website. So if the club does have a website, you want to take a moment to look through that. So here is our homepage here. You want to look at the about section. And then if you want to join, you will definitely have to take a look here. So this is information on how to join my club, Emerald Hunters. And so we do have our application status right here. And so our applications are going to be opening literally on the day that you see this video, and then they're closing on the 30th. So we have our general application process here, our requirements, and then some frequently asked questions. So you definitely want to read any frequently asked questions that are on their website as well. So again, the idea is to really look through as much information as you can. So going through all of the tabs and seeing what their outfit looks like and perhaps their history and the dressage method. Also, you can take a look at their general schedule. Okay, so this is going to be our general schedule. Now, keep in mind, not all clubs are going to post information like we do. Some may put even more information about their schedule. Some clubs may not even post their schedule at all. But this is at least for us our general schedule. So then you want to take a look for their YouTube channel. So at least for Emerald Hunters, they are being featured on my channel. So you won't be able to type Emerald Hunters specifically and find an Emerald Hunters channel. But if you take a look at the different videos that we have, you can see that we we have a couple of fun videos here. So we did our St. Patrick's Day event right here. I did a collab with one of my club members. Here's our club trailer. And here's also a dressage video that I did with another club. And so Emerald Hunters and Sword Sisters, we collaborated. And so you want to look through their channel and see what kind of content they're posting. What kind of things are they doing with their dressage or with their club? What kind of events that they're doing? And that way you can comment on that video and you can kind of ask questions there if you need to. But 
But yeah, looking at the club's YouTube channel will give you a really good insight on how they run their dressage, what their dressage method is, and also their competition routine. So as you can see, we competed in Luring Lovers, which was hosted by SSD. So this is a really great video to see if they even have a competition team in the first place. So if you're looking for the competitive atmosphere of a club, then you'll want to look for competition videos for that club. So another really great place to do research about a club is on their open Discord server. Usually clubs will have an open server that is available to the public so that they can meet their members and learn more information about their club. So Emerald Hunters does have an open server, but it is currently private. So it is going to be released to the public very soon. But I'm going to go ahead and show you what the open server looks like so you can learn how to sort of use Discord to research clubs. So another great place to do research about a club is on their open Discord server. Now, not everybody has Discord, but if you do, you'll want to start joining some servers to get to know some clubs, meet people in the community, and potentially even take lessons with those clubs. Right now, we are actually on the Emerald Hunters open server. It's not open yet. It is being made right now. It's still being completed, but it will be released to the public very soon. So keep an eye out for that announcement. But yeah, you'll want to look for their information tab right here. So we have lots of information here about our weekly schedule. Okay, so this is our general schedule. It looks very similar to the website that we already talked about. We have information about us right here, so you'll want to read through all of this. Then we have some pictures here, and we also have a tab for videos, that any videos that Emerald Hunters has been in. You still want to keep going and looking through their server to see if there's any more questions or information that you can learn about that club before you actually apply. So moving on to this next section, we have information about our application. So here is a really cool flowchart that I made about how to understand what's going to happen with your application process. So you can be either accepted or rejected, and that depends on what happens. But then we have information about the trial, frequently asked questions about our applications, and then the application itself is right here. So you may notice that there's actually a lot of repeated information. So stuff that you see perhaps on the Discord, you'll also see on our club website. And the reason why we repeat information in different places is because we don't know where you're coming from. So you could find us on Instagram, you could find us on YouTube, you could find us through our Discord server. We don't know exactly where you're coming from. So the first time you see the information is really important important that you have all of it. So depending on where you come from, we want to make sure you have that information. So that's why stuff is usually repeated on multiple different platforms. You'll see the same questions and answers. You'll see the same information posted on club websites and Instagrams and discords. And so again, it's just to ensure that no matter where you come from, you have all of the information that you need to apply to our club. And then let's go ahead and click on our application. I feel like I'm ready to apply to Emerald Hunters. So we're going to click on this application right here and we will get started with our app. So we've completed our research and now we're ready to apply for the club that we want. So basically you'll just click on their link and you want to take a look at their first information page. Usually clubs will have some information about their requirements on their first page and so we've kind of just put our information here again just in case people click on them on the link automatically and they didn't read our website or anything. And then our tips on applying. So most of the time clubs want you to meet all of their requirements before you apply because if you apply and then you don't meet one of their requirements, say that you're too low of a level or you don't meet the age requirement or you don't have the horse, and then you apply anyway, then you kind of just wasted your time by applying for a club that will basically reject you because you didn't meet their requirements. So the next tip that we have is to be honest. Please, please, please be honest with us as club owners because guaranteed 100% of the time we will find out if you lied about something and you'll basically be removed from that club and it's really not a good reputation. It's really not a good image if people find out that you lied about being in a club because basically you lied your way into the club and then you're taking a spot away from somebody who was honest and actually does meet those requirements. So again, you're essentially wasting time applying for a club that you don't meet their requirements for if you're not honest with them. Now, obviously, we don't want you to tell us your whole life story about your whole history and Star Stable. We just want you to tell the truth and, you know, be a good person in your responses. So this next tip right here is super, super, super important. It's that you have to read the questions very carefully and I'm going to show you how to kind of do that in a moment but we want you to read the questions carefully 
answer them very thoroughly with a lot of detail and with specific examples. This is because when we read your application, this is the first time we are ever going to have sort of contact with you. We are going to be meeting you for the first time with this application. We don't know you in game yet. We are getting to know you through this application. So the more information that you put about yourself, the more likely we're going to accept you because we know you better. And of course, the more that we know about you, the more that we can figure out whether you're going to be a good fit for our club. So really make sure that you're writing a lot about yourself. Really make sure you answer the question uh, as you know best as you can. And don't write irrelevant information. So really make sure you're answering that question specifically. Then of course you want to make sure you proofread your answers for grammar and spelling before you submit your application. It can be difficult to read applications sometimes if there is not proper grammar or spelling. Yes, we do understand that people may not have English as their first language or they have dyslexia or some other uh, kind of learning disability that may prevent them from using proper grammar and spelling sometimes, but do the best you can. That's all we ask for. And then at least for Emerald Hunters, you do have to be prepared to write short essay questions. That kind of goes back to this part right here where we want you to write a lot about yourself. You're going to be spending a lot of time on this application. I, I promise you, you need to spend a lot of time on applications, not just for Emerald Hunters, but for any club that you apply to. You need to spend a lot of time on it so that you actually stand out from the crowd. If you're a much bigger club than Emerald Hunters, if you're like Terrific Tigers, Pink Queens Legacy, Red Champions, you're going to get hundreds of applications per session, per round of application openings. The more information that you put, it's more likely that you're going to stand out from the crowd of people who may not have this information that may not know how to apply for a club properly. So you want to use this time that you spend on your application to really stand out from the crowd. Okay, and then you'll want to make sure you read through the requirements again, as well as if you're applying for our comp team, you want to make sure you meet all of these requirements as well as all of these. So you want to take a look through there. Here's some information about our trial as well. And then if you want to look at our media, here it is. Here's our link tree, which I just showed you in the last clip. And then we do have information here about when the applications close. So that way you know exactly what day and what time they close. So let's go ahead and move on to the next section. And so we do have a section for frequently asked questions. So we do want to make sure that you read through all of this. And at the bottom of the application, we do have an acknowledgement section that says, yes, I've read all of the frequently asked questions. And then you move on. And so now you can start taking a look at all of the questions here. So what I actually recommend is to not completely fill out the application just yet. I want you to take a look through all the questions like this. So you can just kind of type whatever and you want to skim through each of these questions. So we're looking for a nickname, pronouns, okay, alternative contact, just pick one, write out your contact. And then keep going throughout this entire application until you have finished skimming all of the questions. Okay, so I have made it to the bottom of the application and I have finished skimming all of the questions. So the purpose of skimming an application before you actually start filling it out is so that you can see the types of questions that they're going to be asking and so that you can get an idea of the information that the club is asking you for. So for example, you've already typed out your name and your nickname and your pronouns and all of that. And you come down to maybe this question right here where it says, how soon can you get all of the outfit items? And then you realize, oh, I can't get any of the club gear. If you come to a question like this and you don't meet that requirement, now is the time to stop filling out that application. For the most part, if you really can't get that requirement for the club, it's much less likely that you're going to be accepted into it. So if you see a question like this and you don't meet that requirement, you've already at least kind of skimmed through it and know that you know, oh, I can't get the outfit intact, so I'm probably going to have to stop with the application for now and then wait until you can get all of the outfit items, such as, you know, within a few weeks or so, or if you already have the outfit items. So that's just an example of why you would want to skim the questions. And so again, the idea is to just get an idea of what kind of information the club is asking you before you actually put all of the time and effort into applying for a club. And then you realize that, oh, 
there's this one requirement I can't meet, but I've already spent like half an hour with the other parts of the application. So now what we're going to do is go all the way back to the very top of the application and begin filling it out for real. Now that we have an idea of what kind of questions that that club is asking for, we can go ahead and start filling in our information. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And then in the next clip, we're going to actually review those answers and take a look and see if it's a good application or a not so good application. Alrighty, everybody. So we're going to take a look at this application. This is going to be a fake sample application. Obviously, when you fill out an application for your club, you don't want to be faking it or putting any false names or anything like that. This is just an example. So I did put my name and I did put some of my information in here in these questions, but be sure to always be honest with your responses. So for this fake example, we have our SSO name here. We have our nickname, Beck pronouns she, her, alternative contact. So this person put Instagram as their contact and here they put their contact right there. And let's go ahead and actually check that on Instagram and see if that actually exists because sometimes people will put a contact or they'll put their username incorrectly and then we won't be able to contact them. So let's double check and see if this person actually exists on Instagram. Alrighty, so this person does exist, which is really nice so that we know that they're a legit person and we know that they post Star Stable related content because they have some Star Stable posts here. So that's good. We kind of just went over and verified that this person exists. And then we're looking at Star Rider. So yes, lifetime. This person is level 20. Time zone, good. And this person has all of the club horses. Very, very nice. Let's see, this person already owns all of the club outfit items and has access to YouTube. Very nice. Let's see, has access to Zoom as well. This person does have Discord, and so this is their Discord name here. Again, um, this is going to be a fake name, so please don't try to look that up. That might not exist, or that might be someone else, so please do not search for this. This is just an example. Let's see, are they on Cookie Canyon? Yes. And then how active? They are active every day of the week. Very nice. Practice schedule, so they can come to at least two practices every week for this club. They are active in the early afternoon to the early evening and they are able to check the club calendar every single day. That's really nice. And then dressage level. This person is advanced. They picked that their learning style was visual. Very nice. They have about a four for internet connection. So at least for Emerald Hunters, that is a good connection here. And then let's take a look at the short essay questions. So already as a club owner, by the length of this response, I can tell that the person put in a little bit more time. So let's see what they have to say. So first I make sure to discuss with my club leaders or owners if I am going to be missing a practice. Really good right there. This one is talking about having good communication skills. So uh, talking to owners if you're gonna miss a practice is really important. I contact the leaders as soon as I know I will have a conflict, a minimum of one hour before practice. If I cannot tell the leaders why I am missing practice, I will let them know as soon as I can. Yeah, that's a really good first paragraph right here. And then secondly, I make sure to talk to other members and ask them questions about the club before I talk to staff. This is so that I can meet new members and get to know them and also avoid talking to staff unless it's absolutely necessary. Of course, I want to get to know the staff and owner, but I like to make sure I can talk to leaders about smaller issues. Okay, so here's another interesting uh, paragraph that they wrote about. So they talked about how they uh, talk to other members first and then kind of go up the, up the chain of command. Lastly, I make sure to talk to other members regularly. I'm pretty active in the chats. I like to say hi to everyone as they log on, ask them how they are, and I try my best to listen to others if they are sharing stories or need advice. I also do my best to listen carefully to announcements or instructions from any staff and the owners. If I have any questions in the moment, I make sure to ask politely and and never demand an answer if I don't hear one right away. So yeah, I really like this part down here. Uh, make sure you ask politely so you have really good manners and you don't demand an answer right away. And then you also try to listen to others. That's also another uh, communication skill. So it's not just about talking in the chat. It's also about listening to others and really making other people feel heard. So I, I really like this answer right here. Okay, so for the next question, please describe ways that you are kind to others. As mentioned in the previous question, I like to say hello to others when they log on. I always try to say goodbye to others when they log off as well. I like to do this because it fosters a connection with 
people and it shows that I care that they have a good day. Okay, yeah, so I like how you took the time to talk about small gestures like that. Even just saying hello and goodbye is really good. It, it Like you said, it does foster a connection with people. Another example of kindness to others is that I like to look in global chat and answer questions that people have. Usually I try to I try my best to help people learn how to unlock a Pona, and I ask them questions about what requirements they have already met and give them advice on how to do their other requirements. I also like to show people where certain locations or characters are. Okay, so that's really cool. So that shows that you're a helpful person. Whenever I see people who walk up to me, I am usually the first person to say hi. I also like to compliment people's outfits or horse names. Okay, I like that too. I like how you're trying to reach out to the community as well. Finally, I also show good sportsmanship during races, champs, and performances. I always congratulate others for having a good race and never get mad if I lose. During performances, I always think about what we did well on and provide constructive feedback when prompted. Yeah, so I like what you said here. I like how you said about providing constructive feedback when prompted because sometimes people don't want constructive feedback. Sometimes they just don't. And that's okay. So you always want to make sure that you ask people for constructive feedback if they ask for it. And then I like how you talked about this right here, good sportsmanship. That shows me you're a really good character. Finally, uh, please describe ways that you are safe on the internet. So it is never safe to share your Star Stable login information, such as your email or password. I should never share my account with other, with anyone, even my family, because I do not want to risk my star coins being spent or being banned for whatever reason. On the regular internet, I know I should be careful when talking talking to strangers and never give out any personal information, such as the state I live in, where I go to school, what I look like, or how old I am. I make sure not to respond to, block, and report any suspicious accounts. I also don't open any emails that end up in my spam folder. I never share my real name with anyone. I can never be completely sure who is behind the screen. There could be predators or other manipulative people out there who are taking advantage of me. I never get into online relationships either. Also, I make sure to read the Star Stable Terms of Service and uh, so that I know what I'm allowed and not allowed to do on the game. Okay, so this is really great. So very clearly you show that you understand that the internet can be an unsafe place and that you have different strategies to be safe on the internet. So the next question is, well, do you have any other questions about the club? And so this person asks, what do I do if I can't log on to Star Stable because I have an important test or my schedule changes drastically? So that's a really good question. And this information wasn't already up here at the very top where we had our information. So if we kind of scroll up here, we don't really have any information about what happens if your schedule changes really drastically. So that's a really good question. So this person did apply for the comp team. So they're level 20, age range is 21 plus. They can always keep their horse happy, which is really important. Uh, access to Zoom is good. And then this question here, please list all the dressage clubs you have been in or owned and please discuss why you are no longer in those clubs. So provide as much information as you can. Well, if you've been in a lot of clubs, you don't remember all the clubs you've been in. So it's fine if you don't remember, but do the best you can to provide information about why you're not in those clubs anymore. So just so you know, these are fake clubs. Well, I, I hope they're fake. I don't know if these club names actually exist out there. So if this is your club name, I'm really sorry. I didn't I did, had no idea your club existed, but I'm just using this as a sample. So this person was a member and they wanted to have a higher dressage education than what the club provided, so they left the club. Then in the next club, they were a member and then were a student that learned dressage and then became an instructor because they were very active and had prior experiences with teaching. Okay, that's really cool. And then for this last club, uh, they are the owner for that club and that club was handed down to them um, because they showed really good leadership skills. So that's really nice. So you have experience with dressage clubs, it seems. Uh, and so it's really cool that... Um, you remember a lot of information about your clubs and you have experience with teaching as well. So it looks like you'll be a good fit for the club and the comp team. So this person has learned dressage in a lot of different ways. So they selected all of those. And this person said that they used a lot of YouTube videos to help them learn dressage. And have they ever participated in a competition before? This person has. And so they participated in the Emerald Show, which is an exhibition show. Then they talk about when it was and what place they got. 
and what club they competed with. So that's really cool. They talked about, you know, their past history and when it was and what their placing was and what club they competed with. So that's a lot of really good information. Do you have any further questions about the comp team? What is the competition schedule for the year? And also, do you require new outfits for every competition? So those are really good questions as well. That information we don't put on the website or we don't put that publicly on our website until you've been admitted to the club. So so you would find out that information later on. But those are really good questions that tells me that you've done the basic research, but now you want to know even more information about our comp schedule and about uh, outfits, perhaps so you can save up star coins for those outfits if we do require them. So overall, this is an outstanding application. It has a lot of information. I got to know the person a lot better through this application, and I would definitely automatically accept this person into the club. So this is a very strong application. So we we are going to go ahead and take a look at another application and this is going to be a different application and I kind of want to review this type of application with you so that you know what to avoid. So this person's name is Rebecca Ravenbird. They didn't capitalize their name but that's fine. Their nickname is Beck. Pronouns are she, her and they picked email as their alternative contact but they weren't sure why they have to give an email. Hmm, so the answer to that question is right up here. So the Star Stable mailbox is difficult to use, therefore we will not contact you. So we have this information here, so that way you can put this in put your information in this answer box right here. So this person has a three-month subscription to Star Rider. This person is level 15, and then their time zone is mountain time zone. They have the Andalusian, which at least for my club is required. Let's see, for the outfit in tack, three to four weeks for them to get this particular outfit. This person does have access to YouTube, so that's really good. This person unfortunately does not have access to Zoom, and that is one of our requirements. So automatically right here, if you don't have access to Zoom, at least for my club, I would automatically reject you because you don't meet this requirement. However, we're going to still take a look at this application because we want to take a look at the SI questions as well. So this person does not have Discord, and they put that here as well. They don't have Discord, so they put that there. This person is not on Cookie Cannon, and they cannot move there so that would be another requirement that they can't meet so this person is only active on Tuesday and so therefore they don't meet the minimum of two two days out of the week for their requirements and it looks like down here they say yes they can meet those practice days but it's very confusing since they only put one day out of the week so that's another reason why we would probably want to make sure that uh, you guys are reading the questions very carefully so this person is only active in the very early morning and the very late evening as well. So that tells me this person didn't really read the requirements on what days and what times we practice. So as you can see right here, we have our Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule for one hour and that these are our typical times right here. So you must be able to meet these time requirements as well as the day of the week requirements right here. So this person, I can tell that they didn't really read this and so they just said that they're early morning and late evening. Yeah, they're being on honest, but at the same time too, they did mention that they're only available on Tuesdays. So again, really not quite paying attention, not quite aware of the situation for our club. So this person is only able to check the website about three out of five days. That's not quite enough for us. We'd like for you to make sure that you're checking the website every day just in case there are any changes to our schedule. This person is an intermediate student in dressage and then this person is an auditory learner. That's fine. So this person's internet connection is a four, so that's okay. And here's where we're gonna talk a lot about the SI questions. So so I have definitely received applications that look like this, and I'm sure all club owners have gotten answers to their questions that look like this. So let's take a look at this. It says, uh, please describe ways you have good communication skills. And this person says, I like to text people a lot. My friends are always on Instagram or they like to text me and we have a lot of fun with FaceTime too. 
Uh, they spelled FaceTime wrong. I also like to hang out with my mom. She's really nice, and my dad likes to watch TV with me and me and my mom after dinner. Sometimes we also talk about school, and my mom helps me with my homework. The big issue with this question, with this answer, is that it's irrelevant. So this does not answer the question about having good communication skills. And so, yeah, it's cool that you like to text your friends a lot, but I want to know how you communicate with people in general in Star Stable. So... Do you talk to your club owners? Do you talk to your staff? Do you um, let other people know that you're having issues or anything like that? Yeah, this just doesn't quite answer the question here. And then uh, this is also a run-on sentence here. This is quite long of a sentence, and I understand what you're trying to say, but at the same time, too, run-on sentences do stand out in applications in a negative way. And so you want to make sure you're trying to uh, break up your sentences here and break up your different thoughts by using periods and commas. So just so that we know that, you know, we are getting a very clear answer. And so we also have a little piece of information here. It says we expect a minimum of three sentences per question. And this person, yes, they answered with three sentences. But again, the content of the message was irrelevant and it didn't give me any new information about you. So the next question, it says, please describe ways that you are kind to others. And you say being kind is important and I am very kind. So I think I should be in your club because I'm never rude to people. So as you can see, this person right here is using text speech. So any kind of acronyms or abbreviations that you would use in texting, you do not want to use these in an application. It does not appear professional if you use these kind of uh, text languages. So you want to make sure you completely spell out your words to help you stand out. And again, it doesn't meet our three sentence requirements. And it also has a couple of spelling errors here. And so this answer would definitely not fit our requirements. So please describe ways that you are safe on the internet. And this person says, I don't give out my passwords. So they only put one thing there and it says literally, Does please describe ways, plural. So we want to have a multiple uh, variety of answers here. So we want some specific examples, plural. We want to have different scenarios and different information that you know about being safe on the internet. And this is just way too too short. This doesn't tell us how you're safe on the internet. But I mean, yeah, it's great. You don't give out passwords, but there's more to internet safety than just not giving out passwords. Okay. And so this person has a lot of questions about the club. What days do you practice? What times do you practice? How long is my trial? Do I need discord? How many star coins is the outfit? And what color horse do I need? This I can tell that this person did not research and did not read a lot of the information that is provided. So what days we practice, you can find that up here uh, where we talk about your schedule. I believe it's right here. What days and times that we practice. So that answer is right there. Let's see, how long is my trial? If you go all the way back up here, you will find out that your trial is three weeks long. So you want to look at the FAQ section as well as the trial process here. Then this person asks, do you need Discord? And the answer again is up here. Zoom is required and Discord is not. So as you can see, there is no requirement for Discord uh, in the info box up there. How many star coins is the outfit? We do actually specify how many uh, star coins it costs. So the total is right here, 1,467 star coins. And then the last question this person asks is, what colored horse do I need? Again, if we look up here at the very top with our information, it does say any color and magic horses are accepted so you can bring any color and illusion to our dressage practices and that's fine. So again, I can really tell that this person did not quite research enough into our club requirements and they filled out some of the information incorrectly or uh, they just quite didn't, they didn't quite know how to answer the question. So at least from the general application, I definitely would be rejecting this application. But this person did apply for the comp team, so let's take a look at their answers there. So they say their character level is level 17. However, I do check up at the very top here. So if you say on the... Um, the comp team application that you're level 17, but you said that you were a different level. 
So right here, they said that their level was 15. What is their age range? They are 13 and under. So for our comp team, you need to be 14 or older or demonstrate maturity. So then the next question is, do you have a max and illusion that you can keep happy at all times? And they say that they can rarely keep their horse happy. So that kind of does show what they had talked about earlier so they said that they were only available on Tuesdays and so if you can't get on that often then you can really keep your horse happy so that does make a lot of sense that does have a connection there so do they have access to zoom they said no again this would be rejected because that's not meeting our requirements and then the next question is please list all the dressage clubs you've owned and then they say they don't remember the clubs they owned and that there was drama in all of them so they got kicked out of all of them so this is a really important point right here if you ever experience any drama while you're in a club and you're involved in it and you get kicked out of a club especially um because of drama you will will definitely want to let that club owner know you want to put that in your application and then you also want to talk about how you worked around that how did you overcome that situation and show that you've grown from that situation with drama because that is something that we're kind of looking for as club owners we want to see how you grow as an individual and so if you talk about a situation with drama then you'll want to make sure you also talk about how you've grown up from that situation. But then overall, this answer does not really tell me anything. It doesn't tell me what clubs they were in, and it also doesn't tell me what ranks you were. So if you were a beginner in a club and then you went up to intermediate in a different club, we want to know that information, especially if we're a dressage club. So then this person says, how have they learned dressage previously? So they've learned from friends, and that's totally fine if you learn from friends. Uh, however, if you are joining our comp team, you may have a completely different experience with learning dressage than you would uh, with your friend there. So it's totally fine that you know some dressage from your friends, but again, it's a completely different experience. So this person has never competed in a competition and they, uh, they did put here an answer. The answer is not required here if you only if you answered yes to the question. So they said, I've never completed a, in a comp. So obviously some spelling errors there as well. And then any further questions? Do I have to be on the comp team? And the answer to that is no, the comp team is optional. And it even says at the very beginning of this part of the application, please only fill out this section of the application if you're also applying to the comp team. So if you're just applying to the general club, all you have to do is fill out the top portion here. And then if you're also applying to the comp team, then you would want to continue and fill this part out. So overall, this was not a very strong application. And again, we as club owners see applications that look like this all the time. So you really want to have an application that looks like number one here. So number one has a lot of detail. It's very honest. It gives a lot of very uh, specific examples. This person is very active and this person can meet all of the requirements as well. All right, everybody. I know that was a really long video, but I hope you learned something from it. And I hope you were able to see exactly what a really good club application looks like. So that way you can fill out an application for any club just like that. If you're applying to Emerald Hunters, please, 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 please do not copy my answers. I will automatically reject your application if I do see that you're copying these answers. This was just an example. This was a sample. It's completely fake. It was made by me for the purpose of showing you what a really good application looks like. So please make sure to put in your own information and, and your own answers so that way I can take a look at that. All right, everybody, I hope this was really helpful for you. Let me know if you have any other club application tips down in the comments below. And if you're applying to Emerald Hunters, I cannot wait to read read your application. Our applications are currently open and they are going to be closing on April 30th at 1159 Pacific Standard Time. So thank you all so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!